this week's program of Ascend Live on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. And today our guests are the founders of a rapidly growing uh, Solano County social group for folks on the spectrum called Found It. But before we get into that, Will, what's with your shirt this time? I'm glad you asked. This this episode shirt is my is a giant shirt. The, next this week is their last is their last week of the season. I'm wearing it in to honor them. Well done and well done and go Giants. Thank you. <laughs> we'll miss them. Will would you like to begin with our guests? I'm I'm I would love to. How did you establish this group? I will. Um I established the group because my son Darian is on the spectrum and we currently live in Sassoon. We've lived in Sassoon for about 16 years and I've taken Darian to Davis. We've had social groups in Fremont, San Francisco, Orinda, and we really wanted something in our own neighborhood. So what we decided to do was, as I always say, we found it within ourselves to create something special, and we truly hope that we did with Found It. Tell us about your activities. We have a lot of different activities. We have um, Robin's Cafe, which is a cooking special. Robin has uh, done our wrap class where she's done two different types of wraps for our, our group. Um, and it's not just Robin doing the instruction and telling people how to do it. All of our members actively participate in doing that. She's done a mug class where all the ingredients are fresh and you put it in a mug and you heat it up in the microwave. We've had a music appreciation class. We, had, um, we have several presentations, one on how to deal with bullying, anxiety, effective communication, social media, and we also do act, um, outside activities. Like we re most recently, we've gone to Chinatown, Japantown, Endless Summer in Berkeley, which is amazing carnival food, and um, axe throwing. Uh, we've done a train ride, and um, gosh, so many other things I can't think of at the top of my head. But we just like to have fun, and we like to be there for each other and provide peer support. Yeah. Tell us about some of your members. Uh, I think we have the most awesomest members ever in the whole wide world. One sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have um, other members that are on the spectrum. We have some that have brain injuries, some that have cerebral palsy as well. Um, and they're just an amazing group of individuals. Darian has made some great friends, especially with um, one of our main members, Mike. Uh, who's just an amazing guy who works out at Recology and is active as, in his community. And um, we've seen so many people come out of their shells from the beginning of when they first walked through our doors and not really talking to now they go and speak on a microphone, tell us about their lives, and are just excited to be there. So, yeah, like I said, we have some of the most amazing members. <laughs> Darian, can you tell us about your involvement with Founded? I would love to, Keith. So, so I, um, I have met several friends there who are very good. They have hosted birthday parties and invited me to their birthday parties at, at their own homes. Very nice. And as she was talking about, Mike is a very good friend of mine, and we go to a lot of things together, like... Once a month, we go to wrestling in Elk Grove. We'll go out to the movies with each other. Excellent. Of all the things that you've done there, what do you like best? I like just hanging out and being able to talk to people and not being judged. Really, really good. I'm sure a lot of the people who are viewing this program can relate just to that. Okay, thank you. So, Rowan, how do you get involved with this Jolly Crew? Well, I've known Alexis for a very long time, mm -hmm. and during that time, I have um, gone with her to Davis. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've heard and watched the struggle, and so when she found, found it, um, she asked me to, to come along with her in the journey. So I've kind of been the, the worker bee mm -hmm. and uh, try to help out any way I can. 
So, um, like Alexis said, I um, have done some cooking classes. Mm -hmm. Um, I get to watch the members um, not only learn new things, um, I I get to see them go from being these quiet individuals to so loud, you know, (laughs) and and interacting with each other and laughing. And it's, it's just been an amazing journey. So... I, there's not, I can say so much about this organization, but it, it's just a great place for people to be and open up. And like Darian said, to not be judged. Well, excellent. Well, we're going to have you say a whole lot about this organization. <laughs> what are the things that um, you've enjoyed most about doing it? It sounds like there's been a lot of that. I think one of the most important things for me is I've got to, gotten to know people mm-hmm. and seen their struggles, and they're not much different than mine, but at the same time be able to help them move along in those struggles um, to, to get the support both socially and with peer support. Um, it, it's just been really an awesome thing to watch. Um, so one of the things I do is I run around taking photos, and <laughs> I make sure that I document every one of our meetings along with any of our outings so i'm kind of like the social media person who really doesn't have a lot of social media experience now you do yeah so so you know there's a crew of us it's just it's not just me being you know the person running around we have a a, a crew of other people and so we just kind of make sure everything rolls along smoothly everything everybody gets what they need and that we just create a really happy positive place for everyone yeah and the the crew that robin speaks Mm -hmm. to is primarily Chandler, Danielle, Tyler, my other, <laughs> my other kids. We're we're family based, um, and Robin's daughter Cleo is very active in our program as well, and mm. has just been amazing, um, watching everybody come together and work together. And we consider our members family as well. They're just an extension of our family, and we have some great parents that also help out and um, are very active in our group. And Jeff too. And Jeff too, yes, we gotta mention Jeff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because he's amazing. I don't think I could do half of this without his help, so. What are you hoping to accomplish in this group? Well, we look at Found It as being much more than just a social group. We, We try to stress that we're here as peer support as well. And with peer support, we've done how to handle bullying, anxiety, Um, effective communication, social media, and through some of those we found out that there's other struggles that our members are dealing with. A lot of our members are seeking employment and with them seeking employment we started looking a little bit more into it and found that there is a desperate need for it. My son Darian, for example, has had his own struggles with employment. So one of our goals within the three years, which I actually have no patience, so I'm hoping that we can do this much sooner, is to open a facility to help employ, um, help our members with employment skills and have a training center so that they can come to our training center and learn some basic skills in retail. Um, one of our longer goals is housing because we know that housing is such, such a desperate need for our individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, many don't have a place to go or parents are concerned that when they have gone on and have passed, where is their son or their daughter going to go? So we want to try to help bridge that gap eventually in the future. Ten years is a long time away, but we want to be able to put ourselves in the right position so that we can help individuals. Excellent. Can you tell in a little, each of you, if you like, how have you grown the organization and how did you get the word out? Oh, my. Um, we started with about six members. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a small presence on Facebook. We had our website. Uh, there's another person that I was working with in Solano County. Her name is Lynn. She has social opportunities for disabled adults. Mm-hmm. Between the two groups, we were able to kind of merge a little bit together, work with each other, and we started growing that way. Um, and so we're up to about 20 to 25 members that come on a regular basis now. Mm-hmm. And we just keep pounding the pavement. We go to different tabling events. We've mm-hmm. gone to Burger Boogaloo. We've gone to the Solano County Health Fair. Um, today we're going to a wrestling event for autism awareness that is put on by Fly Brave. So we're extremely excited about that. So we just, you know, we're grassroots, do it yourself, 
and just pound the pavement and get ourselves out there. That sounds like the key, folks. If you're interested in forming a similar group, now you hear how it's done. <laughs> yeah. So, Dorian, why don't you tell us about some of the events that you have coming up? So, we're going to be going to the Solano County Health Fair next week, right? Mm hmm. And also, for Halloween, we have a special meeting where you can dress up and look as silly as you want. <laughs> Sounds like fun. So, Alexis and Robin, can you tell us a little bit more about what your uh, goals and programs are for employment? So, with employment, as I was saying earlier, we would like to have an employment center where we can do training for basic skills for people that might not have ever had a job before. Um, but during the break, I was speaking with Jennifer, and Jennifer brought up a good point because Jennifer is highly educated and overqualified for a lot of jobs. So it makes me think that there's definitely room for us to, to think outside of the box and try to start partnering up with people, since this is one of our three-year goals, that might be able to help us expand and work with people that are highly qualified for jobs and get them in the right place and have um, mock interviews, um, resume sessions, and things like that. But again, it's our three-year goal, so we're up for anything. Excellent. Your thoughts, Robin? Well, I, I, I had never heard that question before, so Jennifer really made me think as well. Um, we had a, a, when we first came to this meeting last week, somebody else had brought up a, a, a subject that I'd never thought about as well. So it, it really kind of just opens my mind of what else is out there? What else could we do? And I, I agree, finding people to partner with um, for these, these needs out there that we don't have the resources for is, is really great. So thank you, Jennifer. That was a great question. You're welcome. Excellent. Um, do you have any, uh, a Oh, hold on. Housing. Housing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know it's like a long-term project, mm -hmm. but can you tell us a little bit about what your initial steps on the housing front might be? Well, it would be great if we could find a location, mm -hmm. um, but funding is a definitely an issue, and the prices of these properties um, are a little outside of our budget. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but in Solano County, it's a little bit less expensive than it is in the Bay Area. So just as there's senior communities, I would like to see a community for our guys and gals where we could come together, we can grow our garden, we can have a communal kitchen, we could um, still have units inside, uh, or kitchen units, excuse me, kitchen units inside each individual's unit, but still come together and work together in this communal atmosphere. Um, but again, 10 years, and we're just looking at every avenue that we can to make this a reality sooner than later because there is a desperate need for it out there. And so any funding that we can find, we are going to find it. <laughs> Excellent. So I was wondering if you can tell us uh, about involvements with other families. Uh, what are um, other additional issues you are addressing? So we do have some very active parents with, with Found It, and what we've decided to do to address other issues that may arise or get more input from everyone is we're having our first committee meeting October, Friday, October 4th, and we're going to be bringing parents, caregivers, and some of our members together to see what what there is that they would like to see addressed or what their struggles are but doing it doing it outside of our meetings so we're not constrained to any time limits yeah. this time separately. yes yes and um, I'm hoping that we'll get a lot of feedback both positive yeah. and even critical of okay. us thank you um, I guess as we're uh, wrapping up this segment, what is the best way for our, our viewers to contact uh, Found It? Go to our website. Mm -hmm. Our website is www.foundithub.org or go to our Facebook page, which Robin does wonderful with updating. And what's that Facebook page, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> Found it peer support and yeah. social group. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we're so pleased to have you all on. Uh, and 
it's great to hear that mm -hmm. you are, you know, you're fighting the good fight, you're helping uh, your community, communities and growing, and we know we're going to hear a lot of good things about you. Very Thank soon. you so much for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh. okay. And now uh, we will hear from Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent. Thank you, Keith. Today I am featuring the works of children's book author Ginny Rorby, who has written a selection of very eloquent books about both disability and neurodiversity. Hurt Go Happy is a heart-wrenching story of a deaf girl who faces many struggles to communicate, especially since her mother refuses to let her learn how to use sign language. Dolphin Sky tells the story of a girl with dyslexia. This book is set in 1968, before many of the special education laws that we currently have were passed, but still the girl in this story was lucky because she was identified as having dyslexia at the age of 12, not having to wait until she was an adult to understand why she struggles with certain things that come so easily to everyone else. Her autism book is called How to Speak Dolphin. This is the story of a young boy with autism who is nonverbal and also, his older sister, who is the main character of the book, and the older sister's best friend happens to be a blind girl who is teaching herself to use alternate methods of navigating her world, including echolocation, like dolphins and bats use. And the girl's stepfather believes that having his son swim with dolphins will somehow help his autism. However, scientific research, which the author cites in her book, has disproven that idea. So it's a warning to parents in search of some sort of miracle cure for their child's autism that you're probably not going to find it. It would be better to accept your child for the way he or she is. So first let me commend the author for doing her homework before she wrote this book. Maybe in the future she can write a book directly from the point of view of a child with autism. That's this book's only serious flaw that we don't hear directly from the child with autism who has a great deal of difficulty expressing himself. But she does quote, Kevin Pelfrey, director of the Child Neuroscience Lab at Yale University. Autistic children, and one would presume also autistic adults, have rich experiences, rich feelings, rich emotions, and these can be harnessed to help them learn to engage. Something for us all to keep in mind. Also, Ginny Rorby has a new book coming out October 1st called Freeing Finch, which features a transgender character. We'll now turn to our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. Okay, well, what I'd like to uh, share first is uh, there's this interesting uh, conference coming up on October 17th um, Autism Science Foundation Day of Learning West, which will be at the City Club of uh, San Francisco on 155 Sansom Street on the 10th floor. But to go into more detail, there's um, a highly successful TED or TED style um, from NY will be featuring speakers that represent their own um, type of programs from all over and their mission is to support autism research by providing funding and other assistance to scientists and um, organizations conducting facilitating publicizing and disseminating 
autism research and the prices do vary and there is no refund so again that's October 17th autism science foundation uh, two more things I want to bring up is the best buddies outdoor movie night happening on October 18th at 5 p.m. at the Mission Dolores Park and at 19th and Dolores so um, bring popcorn snacks and water any other drinks and chairs and um, it'll be Halloween themed Sunday October 20th is ascend is having their annual picnic in Golden Gate Park and the spot is to be determined and it'll start at noon and go till 3 thanks thank you Stacy well folks this is our program for the week uh, until next time I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Stacy Kennedy. I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Alexis Giroux. I'm Darian Taylor. And I'm Robin Joel. And we were sent live on the autism spectrum. Take care. Cut. Right. Okay. Let's get some photos. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep it running or? Now we can turn it off. When you ask me about Facebook, work. I'm all, oh. Places, people. <laughs> Sorry, Robin.